Hey folks, in today's video I am going to be covering some commonly asked questions by Windows users when looking across the aisle to Linux based operating systems. I'm going to be covering things like partitioning, disk space allocation and running applications on Wine, that kind of thing. Now the video, uh, today's video itself is inspired by a comment left just a couple of days ago by a user called Audio Visual Proof. Now I'm not going to cover the entirety of the comment because they did have some technical issues which they have since Solved. Congratulations there. But what I will say to some of those issues is that if you are having trouble booting into Linux for one reason or another, uh, a good place to start looking um, for potential solutions is the BIOS and your, uh, you know, your motherboard manual and all that kind of stuff. Um, because sometimes you do have to tweak a BIOS setting or two to uh, to to get it up and running. But Without further ado, let's uh, crack on. Now, the a bit of context that they give us as well is uh, is thus. I like the feel of Linux and want to learn as much about it as possible, but I do not want to get rid of Windows 10 for gaming purposes and video editing software and uploading to Twitch and maybe YouTube again. So here are six questions I hope can be addressed. So uh, just to uh, sort of uh, expand on the uh, on, on the initial sort of premise here, uh, I, I, if you are like a, a hardcore gamer, if you are the type of person that likes to play AAA titles as soon as they come out, you really are stuck with Windows for the most part. I will cover Wine later on in the video, but um, I do have to concede here, just as a general computer user, that it does seem that Windows is certainly better for a lot of modern day gaming. However, that being said, there are a number of older games that I regularly play, which I hear quite often just don't work on Windows anymore because Windows isn't as good at backward compatibility as um, an uh, compatibility layer like Wine. And I'll, I'll, like I say, I'll talk more about Wine and what it is and what it does uh, later on in the video. But let's uh, crack on with point number one. Do I need to partition my C drive first with the required amount of hard disks or hard drive space to successfully install Linux? Linux usually states 4.5 gigabytes of hard drive space is needed, but I plan on allocating around 20 gigabytes seeing as I have 72 gigabytes of free space. Any advice on how much space to allocate is appreciated? Now, I'm, I'm going to start by doing the incredibly soft answer of it depends entirely on what you intend to use Linux for. Now, you say that you're looking to just learn about Linux and explore it, so 20 gigabytes will probably be enough. However, if you then plan on installing every other piece of Linux software you come across, you're going to quickly need a bit more disk space than that. Uh, you will also need more if you are looking to play games or even do video editing, but since you say that you're going to stick to Windows for that for the time being, presumably, then I would say that 20 to 30 gigabytes, just as a testing out your Linux distribution, is, is probably enough for you, at least for the, you know, for, for now, for, for learning about Linux. Uh, another option, uh, which I often tend to lean towards, is uh, just buying an extra physical hard disk drive and then putting that into the machine. Um, it just, for me, it feels a little bit cleaner. It feels it feels a little bit more flexible. Um, and also, you know, you can, um, yeah, it, it, ju it just seems to be a workflow that I've personally uh, looked towards. However, that being said, it's been a long time since I dual booted. And also, uh, just to contextualize the rest of this video a little bit more, um, whereas I might know a fair amount about Linux, I really don't know that much about Windows. Um, it, it was my operating system before using Linux, and I, I, I've barely ever even touched a Mac. Uh, Linux is, is my first operating system, and, and Windows is something that is a little bit foreign to me now. So, um, I, I, you know, just sort of bear that in mind that I might not necessarily know as much about Windows as, uh, as you guys there. So anyway... Yeah, I, w I would say start off with, with 20 gigabytes and, and see what you can do. You can resize partitions, but it's generally considered to not be stable or safe or reliable. So if you have important data, I would avoid resizing that partition. When it comes to partitioning your hard disk drive as well, and for those of you that don't know what partitioning means, it just means uh, just cordoning off a section of your hard drive. It's almost like virtually splitting your hard drive into two separate hard drives. That's kind of similar to, uh, to how it works, so that you've got one operating system on one sort of theoretical hard drive and you've got another operating system on another that allows you to do dual booting there. So um, yeah, I'd say I'd say 20, 20 gigs of space is particularly good in, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's certainly been enough for me on, on smaller laptops and, and that kind of stuff as well.
Okay, so on to point number two. I'm using Samsung TV with HDMI. What settings do I look to or look for to switch between monitors? Okay, so you do mention uh, some in, in, in other parts of the comment that you are on NVIDIA. Uh, you use a NVIDIA graphics card. And on Linux, NVIDIA have their own graphical tools that allow you to customize multiple monitor setups, for example. They allow you to customize things like vertical syncing and colors and all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty good tool, truth be told. So that would be where your first port of call might be, is that once you've got your NVIDIA drivers installed, which is generally pretty easy on distributions like Linux Mint, then you will then have a nice little GUI where you can, uh, a GUI by the you know, like a, a graphical application that can customize all your monitors in a pretty user-friendly way as well, I find. If you are not using the video, if you are perhaps using Intel or AMD graphics, then each distribution and each desktop environment has its own display manager, but it works in something of a similar fashion to Windows here. You just go into your control panel and you just um, customize your settings um, as you wish. Um, but it does all fall into the display settings. And I have used um, HDMI devices. I don't know if I've ever used a Samsung TV. I've used Panasonic. Uh, so um, yeah, and HDMI to TVs works, in my experience, pretty darn well. I've never really had too much of an issue and certainly not in recent days. Okay, so let's crack on with point number three. How come Linux Mint 9 isn't oh, recognizing my two SSD drives, but recognizes my detachable drives? Is it because I haven't fully installed Linux fully? Okay, um, again, I believe on this point, this is where you may want to look at uh, BIOS settings as well. And um, and that, that, I believe, might be where the, the issue lied. Although, just as a bit of a side note, as a Linux user, I do check whenever buying new hardware that it is Linux compatible. All I do is just a quick search. Um, but truth be told, when it comes to hardware compatibility, I mean, Linux has a better track record for me than Windows by quite a, a long margin. Because if you're setting up Windows, you set up Windows, the base operating system, and then you've got to put drivers and, and, and software on top of that. Uh, and any one of these pieces of software could be buggy or fail or, or, or you know, or any one of these drivers, whereas Linux uh, builds a more coherent ecosystem around hardware support. And it does seem to, to for me at least, uh, provide a good environment for stability. So uh, let's crack on with uh, question four. How effective is Wine at running Windows 10 apps? Uh, I have a MSI GT80s gaming laptop and software such as Dragon Gaming Center, Silent Option Fan Control, MSI Afterburner, and Reva Turner. They're important decisions, decision makers when switching between OSs. Okay, so there's a lot to cover here. Uh, first of all, what is Wine? You might hear it quite a lot when talking about Linux discussions. Wine is a compatibility layer. What it allows you to do is it allows you to take a Windows application and through this compatibility layer, it allows you to run it on a Linux-based operating system. Uh, you probably, if you watch my live streams, will have seen me play Windows games using Wine. Um, however, there is a piece of advice that I want um, uh, you know, that I think is, is is particularly important, and that's that Wine should not really be trusted for critical software. Uh, and I say that quite strongly. Wine should not be tr trusted for critical software. Um, nowadays, it is really quite good, and I use Lutris to manage my, my Wine stuff, but it, I, it's still nothing that I would rely on if, for example, my job required me to use a piece of Windows software. I, I would bite the bullet and use the Windows operating system. I might buy a separate laptop for it, or, or I might, uh, I might dual boot. I'm not a particular fan of that myself. It's not a workflow that I personally enjoy. But um, yeah, it, it, if you rely on Wine to run a piece of software, I would sort of urge you to to, to sort of find the native um, operating system that supports it. So I've not actually heard a lot of these software because it, it you know, it's Windows software. Uh, and I would have no idea if they would be compatible, uh, you know, if there are if they would be, uh, if you could run them on wine. Now, that being said, there could very well be Linux equivalents, you know, Linux pieces of software that do the same job. Uh, and I would imagine for, for the most part, there probably are. 
so um, that would be the direction that I look. Also, just on a, on a significantly more broader note, when looking at making the transition from Windows to Linux, it's very important to remember that not only are the operating systems built very differently, but they're built very differently for a very significant purpose. Um, and, and that affects almost every, you know, sort of way that you approach a problem in terms of, you know, uh, the problem solving and all that kind of stuff. And the way that I think it, it's best explained is that when you use Windows and when you play proprietary games, you are a consumer of a product in the same way that you might buy a car or a ham sandwich or whatever. But uh, if you are using open source software and if you're using Linux, for the most part, it's not, you know, universal, unilateral, but for the most part, you are a participant in a community. You are, you, you have become, uh, you know, it, it's not just something that you can, that you really want to just consume and consume and consume in the same way that you would with commercial software. Uh, what you know, Linux is sort of a bit of the antithesis, the antithesis of that. It's the idea of not having, you know, it, uh, of not have, you know sort of having stuff handed down to you in the same way that companies uh, like to do so with things like DRM and that kind of stuff. And a lot of it is a culture uh, thing as well, um, because you obviously you can run things like Wine, uh, not Wine, you can run things like Steam that have DRM, and, and DRM isn't usually associated with Linux. So it, it, there, I, I suppose in the last few years, maybe the last five years or so, there, ha there has been a degree of windowification to Linux, um, where we have been seeing a lot more like-for-like -like comparisons, you know, so, uh, cross-platform software, all that kind of stuff, um, working its way over to Linux as well. So uh, there is that, but I, it is very important that uh, when looking at um, how the software works and, and how you achieve, uh, how you achieve your goals, how you solve your problems. Um, the two different operating systems require uh, two different approaches. And in regards to that, um, uh, with, with Linux, um, when it comes to asking for help or asking for support, there's huge amounts of it there, but it's much more in a sort of a social environment as well. So for example, if you want good uh, app recommendations, a uh, really good place is just to hang around on Mastodon. There are always people uh, sort of uh, sharing their their, ma uh, their uh, app picks and, and, and all the sort of the neat little pieces of software that they found and found to be really quite useful. Um, and yeah, the way the way that you look for support is a little bit different. It's much more community orientated and all that kind of stuff. So uh, again, it's uh, it, it, it's a bit of a fallacy to imagine that uh, Linux is just a different operating system like Windows. It's not a clone of Windows. It's a it's a different approach to uh, how you use your computer, and that's something that's worth bearing in mind. In the same way that you know how spoken languages don't tend to have like for like translations on sentences. Um, when it comes to solving problems with your computer, there isn't a like-for-like -like solution. You know, if you find a solution for Windows, the chances of it working for Linux are not necessarily, uh, you know, likely on a on a technical level there. So, it's yeah, like I say, it's 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 not always worth coming at problems you find on Linux the same way that you'd approach them on Windows. So uh, that's just something that I sort of wanted to uh, wanted to express there. Okay, uh, point number five, will Linux be compatible with NVIDIA graphics drivers? I will have to do some research to find out if NVIDIA makes compatible graphics drivers for Linux. Uh, yes, I did allude to this earlier. Uh, NVIDIA, I'm probably going to get some disagreement on this and feel free to disagree with me down in the comments section below. Uh, but I would say that NVIDIA is probably maybe the best uh, uh, brand of cards for gaming. Uh, it does use proprietary drivers. So take that as you will, but it does come with good tools to manage the card. Uh, it does come to, with tools to avoid things like uh, screen tearing. It, it does have good color management and multiple screen management, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that it, if I remember correctly, there was a gaming on Linux survey. And I, I think that among gamers, NVIDIA was the most commonly used card with NVIDIA being, no, with a AMD being second place. So there's that. I actually have on my uh, sort of lower end Triton laptop, I have Intel graphics there, and it runs a few games not too badly. So, but I don't think Intel do uh, gamer level graphics cards just yet, although I have heard rumors about what might happen in the future. So anyway, uh, yes, NVIDIA, uh, in my experience, has pretty good support. Um, since you seem to be looking around Linux Mint 19, I can say specifically that Linux Mint 19 does have pretty good support for NVIDIA graphics cards. What you basically do is you boot into Linux Mint 19 for the first time using the open source drivers, and then it will offer to um, 
install the proprietary NVIDIA, um, and the NVIDIA blessed drivers uh, if you want to get just a little bit more performance. However, I am told that the open source drivers for NVIDIA are getting better, so... Um, but uh, but I don't know. I I, I still have, have pretty um, pretty much universally used the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. But yeah, they give pretty good performance. So I'm certainly not complaining on that front. Although I wish they would open source them and put them into the Linux kernel properly. But uh, you know. Okay, and just to round off with point number six, or question number six rather, if Wine works acceptably with Windows 10 software, will I need to keep starting Wine each time, or is there some sort of auto-load function? That would be great, thanks for any and all assistance. Now, just before I crack on with the question, uh, I would just like to uh, clarify on a bit of verbiage used if Wine works acceptably with Windows 10 software. Now, I must say that I'm not familiar really with Windows 10, but as I understand it, the App Store plays quite a strong part in the overall operating system. Now, uh, Wine does work well with Steam, so there are certainly that aspect of games covered. I don't know how well they work necessarily with other the other games launchers that might like you know Ubisoft or, uh, or or any of the others use, but I do know that Steam kind of works uh, pretty well. I also know that GOG games uh, tend to have pretty good track records as well, but. Um, when it comes to using Wine, I typically use it to run uh, older software, um, and uh, and there are, like I, said, I think I've said before, that there are uh, a significant number of games which run really quite well on Wine, which Windows isn't necessarily, uh, you know, able to run because of their uh, attitude towards backwards compatibility. So that's just a, uh, that's just some some things that I've, <laughs> I've uh, some, some uh, that's just something I've picked up over the years, but. Um, when it comes to running Windows 10 software, um, I do. I, I would generally sort of advise against relying, uh, you know, on Wine in general. But the the older the software, the easier Wine typically tends to find running it for uh, pretty obvious reasons, just in terms of how you know how software is typically developed. Um, but yeah. Uh, like I say, when it comes to like leaning and relying on wine, it is something that I typically uh, advise against quite strongly, really. Um, however, to answer the question more directly, will I need to keep starting wine each time or is there an auto load function? So this is basically up to you. Uh, if you just install an application through Wine, it can then put a little shortcut in your start menu, uh, bish bash bosh, you launch it that way every single time. Uh, however, how I personally prefer to do it is with uh, a, an application to manage my Wine software. Uh, these days I'm using Lutris, which is available uh, across, for, well, for pretty much most Linux distributions. Um, and uh, I also use Play on Linux as well as just a way to manage Wine containers, or have done in the past. But uh, but Lutris seems to be the new hot stuff now, so I've been trying that out. And uh, yeah, no, this is pretty good. I uh, I do quite like it. I like that it's just easy to manage all those options. And if a program doesn't run quite quite right, uh, it's great to be able to change the environmental settings the way that uh, the way that you can there. Uh, however, to sort of just to sort of sort of conclude that question, you don't need to start like a launcher or you don't need to start Wine uh, every time. Wine is like a compatibility layer, so it works in between the software. Um, I would generally say that for a more pleasant and experience that you can control more effectively, uh, having something to manage your Wine software is, uh, I would say it's advisable if you are planning on using Wine. However, generally speaking, if your uh, foray into Linux is based on learning about Linux and exploring what Linux has to offer, then you probably won't really, you know, need or want to use Wine that much because um, Linux has its own offerings that are, you know, and they're native and there are benefits and uh, great benefits to, to running native software. So, yeah, rather than just looking at how you can run Windows software on Linux, it's definitely worth looking at how Linux approaches and solving solves a problem um, because it quite likely in many cases might just approach a problem in an entirely different way, one that you might personally prefer. So I think that's about it. Uh, I'm sure that there will be lots of comments from regular users, both outlining um, good points and bad points that I've made throughout this video. But like I say, a lot of this is subjective. I don't know much about Windows these days. So um, take everything that I say here with a grain of salt. I'm certainly no expert. And generally speaking, when I do videos, the comment section is very well informed and tends to call me out on any technical errors that I make and, uh, and often tends to uh, offer further and more 
uh, expanded advice. So that's definitely something which I recommend checking out. And also, please leave a comment. Let me know your workflow. Let me know if you use Wine. Let me know if you have a policy on Wine. Personally, I like to use Wine on older software just as a bit of a nostalgia trip. But really, when it comes to newer games, yeah, I just like to personally prefer to support um, games companies that do port to Linux. It's just a you know personal consumer preference. And uh, there are plenty of great games for Linux, and there are plenty of games for Linux on Steam. I, I gotta say, after looking at all those open source games last week, uh, there's quite a few open source games that are quite quite a lot of fun. So definitely worth checking out maybe some of those videos on, on my channel. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, I think that's about it from me today. What I'll do is I will put up some extra videos. Uh, so I'm gonna like stand to the side like like some of the YouTubers are doing now and like point to maybe some videos that I'm gonna be recommending that are sort of cover similar topics and, and that kind of stuff. I'll tell you what, I'll put uh, I'll put the, the games playlist there for open source games and I'll put maybe like uh, the list of like where I ramble on about Linuxy things maybe above it and, and see how that works. So um so there we go. Thanks very much for watching guys and until next time I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.